Well, tonight we're cracking open this one. Nice pop. Welcome to the show. Well, you might wonder what's going on. You thought this was a first pour, and you'd be right. It is a first pour. A first pour for the soloist, a kind of first pour for the Georgia Hotwood, and not a first pour for the Unison. We've already done a first pour on the Unison. So we're going to start off with the bass, which is the Fiddler Unison. We did a first pour early on. It had been months ago uh, in the channel, so hmm, i got to remind myself what it tastes like. Mm, that is a nice fragrant aroma. It really is. Mm, cheers. I remember this. This is a very light tasting, very sippable bourbon. You generally find it in the mid 30s on the shelf and I see it everywhere in North Georgia. I don't, I don't know where you're at. ASW is a local distillery, so obviously Georgia gets a lot of the product. But it is a nice, light sipping bourbon. It reminds me a lot, even though it's a weeded mash bill, it reminds me a lot of the E.H. Taylor small batch, that kind of light, light fruit, a little bit sweet, easy sipping, nothing harsh about it at all. Uh, it's a good bourbon, and it's an excellent value. When we were at Roswell Beverage uh, just last week, uh, we got to taste this uh, Georgia Hartwood. I'd heard all kinds of good things about the Hartwood. Let's uh, give a little nose treatment to it. Now, it is a lot richer than the Unison. I mean, uh, it just there's just no comparison. I mean, particle accelerated that whole business. If you go to Fiddler, whiskey.com they tell you about all three of these bourbons including the heartwood and what i found was very interesting and i won't read the whole thing but it basically says that the fiddler heartwood begins with the same forged high wheat mash bill as the fiddler unison we then finish it in hand harvested charred georgia white oak heartwood staves that we hand charred and placed in the barrels for the final few months of maturation. More on that process here. You click here and they tell you more about it. And it's it's very informative. This whole process they do with the heartwood and their bourbons, these guys are very transparent with what they do and what they're selling. Where the unison is such a nice light taste, the heartwood brings out the char and the proof and the bold flavor. It's absolutely delicious. So if you go to the website and you look up the soloist, they'll tell you that basically that this is a four grain mash bill, unlike the weeded bourbon we have over here. So this is 56% uh, corn, 40% various malts, which include malted rye, wheat, oats, and barley. We've never tasted that. So that's the real purpose of tonight is to taste this and kind of do a comparison with the other two. So let's see what the nose thinks. Well, this is certainly more traditional bourbon aroma. Uh, you are getting some grain forward in it, some sweetness, definitely some oak. Not the charring you get from this. It's, it's not anywhere near that deep of aroma. But it's a, it's a nice aroma, uh, more traditional bourbon. Hmm. Okay, we're going to let that sit into the mix because we just popped a cork on that. And we're going to go to tasting the Georgia Hartwood first. A second taste, a second sip. Cheers. That is so rich. And the viscosity, the mouthfeel, the way it coats your tongue. The sweetness, wow, that is a wonderful bourbon. It really is. If you've not tried the Georgia Hartwood, uh, you're missing out. And you say, oh, well, I don't like those weeded bourbons. 
This does not taste anything like a traditional weeded bourbon. Uh, this is not your Weller. This is not your old elk. Uh, this is not really any of them. Uh, this is something different. In fact, I think this uh, was about, I think, uh, 117, 118, something like that. But whatever they do with those charred staves and put it at the proof, the cast strength proof that it is, barrel proof, whatever you want to call it, it's good. Now this is uh, a store pick by Roswell Beverage, so they did pick it from a series of barrels. And like any other single barrel, the taste is going to vary from barrel to barrel. So. I can tell you this, the ones over at Roswell Beverage are delicious, and I assume that any of the other ones are as well. I've heard very good things about the Georgia Heartwood, and I see it all over North Georgia. You know, generally in the high 70s, sometimes 80s, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. All right. I think our soloist has breathed long enough, so uh, let's see what the taste is like. Cheers. Definitely more traditional. Definitely get that grain flavor coming in. Uh, it's actually less like a traditional bourbon and more like uh, other four grain uh, or weeded bourbons I've tasted. That it's it's grain forward. Uh, it's an interesting flavor with that uh, all that malted uh, barley and rye in there. It's a, it's a unique flavor. Not quite as sweet as either the Unison or the uh, Georgia Hotwood, but it's got a very interesting flavor to it. Nice coating on the palate. Let's take another sip. It's good. Now I will tell you that because I'm a fan of weeded bourbons, I still like the Unison over the Soloist, but that's a personal preference. Uh, the Soloist is a lot, has a lot more character, has a lot more going on, has a lot of flavors competing for the palate there. Well, let's take one more taste of each and we're going to go to final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts. Well, I can tell you that uh, I'm still as impressed with the uh, Georgia Hotwood as the first day I tasted it back a week ago over at Roswell Beverage. Uh, it is a single barrel, it is a store pick, so it might vary from barrel to barrel but this is really good stuff. Uh, the, uh, it's just on the edge of what I like in proof of being, you know, 117, 118. That kind of gets to the stretching point for me. But it doesn't drink like a bourbon with that higher proof. It drinks more like a, uh, uh, a Maker's Mark cast drink, more in the 110-ish area. I really don't uh, taste the uh, proof that bad. I get a lot more of the flavor and the sweetness and the other things that I like in a well-rounded bourbon. And I think it's a well-rounded bourbon. So on our recommendation system, our ranking, one to five, one being the highest, five being the lowest, don't bother. I would give this a strong level two because I think if you can find this in around $79, $80, I don't see a lot of price fluctuation in the markets up here in North Georgia. I think it's a good buy for what you're getting. This is a weekend supper. This isn't a daily supper. You're not going to go through it real fast. This is something you're going to enjoy week in and week out for some time to come. I think it's a good value for what you're getting. On to the soloist. I don't have quite as strong of a ranking for the soloist because I've tasted four grain bourbons that I like better. So if I had to compare it to a four grain bourbon, what would that be? That would be the Rabbit Hole Cave Hill. 
I just think, even though it is more expensive in the North Georgia market, uh, it's a better bourbon. It's a better four grain bourbon. I really enjoy the Kville. Uh, I always had great hopes for the uh, Soloist, but the Kville is still my favorite. That being said, that I prefer the Kville over the Soloist. I would tell you this is a level three. Shop around, get it at a good price. Uh, it is a good value for the money, and that's why I'm giving it a recommendation. Um, there are better four grain products out there, but they are a little pricier. So, we hope you will like this video, and you will comment and share, and please subscribe, because that's how we grow the channel here at Bourbon Riders, and so we can bring you more content like this, like this kind of triple pour, right? So, as always, never drink and drive. Please drink responsibly, and go get you a good Fiddler bourbon. There's a lot of them out there. Cheers.